Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. Did you fail to dress up for tonight's show? No tie, an old shirt and slacks, a house dress? Well, don't give it a thought. We're glad you came as you are. We just want you to enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to visit our refreshment center during the intermission or any time. You love the tasty array of snacks we have to offer. So will the youngsters. Everything is quality and mm, so good. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see, delightful snacks to nibble, a gay, pleasant evening for all. Oh, a word of caution. Don't drive over 10 miles an hour in the theater area for your safety's sake. And mom or pop, go with the kids when they leave the car. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. <laughs> Mission Science creates an electronic monster so terrifying, only screams can describe it. Come back home. Come back home. According to the evidence, Hennessy was murdered by a creature with atom rays of superhuman strength and a creature that cannot be killed by bullets. I said I would live to see you die. I just came from the bureau. They checked the murderer's fingerprints. His name is Willard Pierce. They let me have it from the files. Petty theft, fraud, three months in prison, tubercular. How could a tubercular man have strength enough to break those bars like that? You think that's something? Answer this one. How could a dead man have strength enough to do it? Fantastic but based on scientific fact. Planes? How low do you fly? You will stop all planes and trucks searching for radioactivity. If you do not, many people will be killed. There will be no other warning. Hello, hello, hello! They hung up before I put a tracer on it. Slow down, Dave. No. Go out and kill him. jungle of death, a power-mad genius who changed them into horrible creatures of another world. Then three strangers stumbled upon his green hell. Two men and a lovely girl who held civilization's last chance to halt this all-devouring evil. Could they stop all this terror? Could they stop this madman? who turned these lovely maidens into half-women, half-beast she-demons. For terror that has no equal, for excitement that never lets up, see this explosion of frightening fury that flames into a motion picture experience you will never forget. Start your day with a song and sing the holy blue. Even while you're busy. 
busy working, do just like the birdies do. Though the day may be long, you never will go wrong. Oh, keep on, keep any old key, just start the day with a song. June 21st is the first day of summer and the longest day of the year. Summer, when the spring buds of the buttercup blossom out and the tulip wakes up and tries to look her very best. The silence of the still summer air is broken only by the persistent snapdragon. Bees also look forward to summer, and after carefully selecting a flower, busily go about their business gathering honey for the coming winter. Get your own honey. Who doesn't like to look back to those wonderful summer picnics? out in the woods, free from the cares of the world. Come and get it! Huh? Fishing is also one of the more pleasant summer pastimes. Summer is vacation time for the kids who spend its glorious days at the good old swimming hole. Last one in is a stinker. <laughs> Last one in is a stinker. Summer romances usually end with wedding bells and petite June brides. Uh-uh, remember. It has always been the custom for the bridegroom to carry his bride over the threshold. You and your big mouth! In the summer, you can also expect a visit from our little friend, the mosquito. Summertime is also time for those proverbial heat waves. Even old Saul himself has trouble keeping cool. Everybody flocks to the beach on these hot summer days. Mm -hmm. Nothing like a cool drink on a warm day. How about you all joining in and singing about the good old summertime? Just follow me. All you've got. In the good old summertime, in the good old summertime, strolling through the shady lanes with your baby mine, you hold her hand and she holds yours, and that's a very good sign that 
with the show. How's the take tonight? Not bad, Mr. Hennessy. Almost 20 grand. Good. Tell the boys I'll be with them in a few minutes. Deposit tomorrow, 142 $100 bills, $150 bills, the rest, five, ten... I told you I'd come back. Remember, Buchanan? Well, you're not Buchanan. I don't look like him. But I am him. Don't you recognize the voice, Jim? I promise to see you die, and I will.
He can be directed. Well, what if it isn't? What if the bullets hit one of the brain electrodes? As long as he has an ounce of liquid in his veins, he will return home. I have told you, these creatures automatically try to return to their source of feeding when their energies run low. Well, your creature has helped us get rid of the first one. I see them all die before I'm through. If I had only known when you first offered to help me financially. Dr. Stagg, if it weren't for my money, you'd still be experimenting with cats and dogs in that flea-sized lab of yours in Europe. I made it possible for you to prove your theory with human beings. That is true. But my theory was to use these creatures to help people live by doing everything that was difficult and dangerous. You just want to see people die. Not just people, Stagg. Particular people. And I'll get them. Every single one of them. And after you do, what? There'll be nothing we can't do or have. Nobody will be able to stop us. Can't you keep him going any longer? No, I can't keep them breathing longer than a few days. Then the glands deteriorate. They just disintegrate. Is he dead? He never was alive. Different parts of the body die at different times. My next problem is how to keep them working as long as the heart is beating. Does the brain still die first? Always. The brain always dies first. home in bed. Hello, Dr. Walker. I gave him exactly $19,821. All right, wait outside, will you please? Oh, hello, Chet. Hi. Hey. Hi, Dave. What does it look like? Your guess is as good as mine. Robbery behind it? Yeah, it could be. Yet whoever did it left over six grand in the safe. Mm, maybe he didn't want to get into a higher bracket. Oh, brother. How did he get it? <laughs> How didn't he get it? Neck's been broken and also a spine, just by twisting it. The murderer must have had the strength of an ape. And as his guard saw him, say he'd look like any other man. Don't tell me he bent these bars. That's what Hennessy's boys say. Killer came in and got out that way. I'd hate to meet him on a dark night. Bullet holes, huh? Uh, Hennessy's boys shot at him. Hit him, too. Look at the trail of blood. We found some blood on the road. You know, there's something screwy about this whole thing. He must have been hit bad to lose that much blood, yet he made it to his car and got away. Mm -hmm. well, whoever it was was certainly careless. These fingerprints are perfect. Isn't that strange? What is? Uh, turn out the lights for a minute, will you? 
See it? Yeah. yeah. The fingerprints are luminous. Yes, and the, the footprints and the blood. Uh, turn on the lights again. Hmm. What do you make of that? Huh. I'm a district attorney, not a chemist. Ask Chet. What about it, Chet? Wish I knew. Let's take this bag to the lab and make a test on it. Mm -hmm. I'll send the fingerprints to Washington. Maybe they can trace them there. Don't let anyone in there. Have you got any idea who did it? Was it robbery? What's he inside in us? Got nothing to say now, boys. Doctor, how did anybody break through those bars in there? Maybe he ate all these vitamins. Uh -huh. Vitamins? solution of hematin. Two absorption bands between the Fraunhofer lines. Oh, cut the double talk, Chet, and break it down to plain English. Take a look. This so-called blood is a chemical composition. Looks like a bunch of crystals to me. Exactly. There are crystals in that concoction. Now, what do you mean, concoction? Yeah, I'll show you. Side. Blood sugars. Throws the beam to the right dextrous. No hemoglobin traceable. No hemoglobin? But it isn't blood. Right. Like I said before, it's a chemical composition. Here, I'll put it in the centrifuge and we'll see what else it's made of. That stuff luminous. That's right. Why is it luminous, Chet? Just as I thought. This so-called blood is highly radioactive. Dangerously so? Plus nine. Is that a lot? I'll have to kill a man if he's exposed to it long enough. Well, that's about all we can do for tonight. Let me know when you hear from Washington on those fingerprints. Well, what'd you find out? Yeah, how about giving us a load on it? Yeah, give us a lead, will you? You want the truth? Yeah. All right, then, according to the evidence, Hennessy was murdered by a creature with atom rays of superhuman strength and a creature that cannot be killed by bullets. Creature? <laughs> you don't expect us to believe that. No. Big joke. Just for that, I'll misspell your name. I don't blame them. I don't believe it myself, and I was with you. Dave, come on in. Where's Chet? Sleeping. Sleeping at this hour? Yes, at this hour. 7.30? Well, don't blame me, Joyce. I don't ask him to be a cop. Get him up. We it's important. Where's Penny? Having breakfast. Hmm. Uncle Dave! Oh, that's my little sweetheart this morning, huh? I feel fine, Uncle Dave. <laughs> There's some coffee in there, Dave. Thanks. I can use it. Well, Penny and me are going to have a little tater tate aren't we, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. I never tasted a tater tate uh -huh. before. Chet. 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 Wake up. Chet, not now. Oh, name a better time. Oh, Dave's here. <laughs> oh, you can wait like you smile. Chet, you don't hear us. So what? We're married. But he's not. Well, then let him find out what he's missing. Oh. Chet. He says it's important. Important? Mm-hmm. About that murder last night? Yeah. Must be. 
You didn't tell me anything about it. I don't believe in talking shop when I'm home. You probably read all about it anyway. And when you do, you won't believe it. I'll tell him you'll be right out. Oh, this door sticks. Remember, Mrs. Walker, you had your chance. <laughs> Come on, open up. Tell me a story first. Oh, it's too early in the morning for stories. I always tell a story to my dolly. Do you like her? Oh, I'm crazy about her. What's her name? Henrietta. Henrietta. I used to go with a girl named Henrietta. What happened to her? Uh -huh. What happened to her shouldn't happen to your doll. She married a con man. <laughs> That's not the kind of a story to tell kids. Hiya, Penny. Hello, Daddy. Hurry up, Penny. You'll be late for school. Come on. Oh, and a girl. Goodbye now. Goodbye, Daddy. Bye, Uncle Dave. Have fun, Penny. Ah, that's the story of a cop's life. Hello, Daddy. Goodbye, Daddy. What's up? You better sit down first. Hmm? I just came from the Bureau and he checked the murderer's fingerprints. His name is Willard Pierce. They let me have it from the files. Petty theft, fraud, three months in prison, tubercular... How could a tubercular man have strength enough to break those bars like that? You think that's something? Answer this one. How could a dead man have strength enough to do it? Deceased? Man, I used to think Scrabble was tough. When did he die? According to that, 24 days ago. Well, that doesn't make sense. You're the smart one. If it doesn't make sense to you, imagine how it sounds to me. Have they got a file on this guy? Yes, I copied it. Died of asphyxiation on the 22nd of last month. Body delivered to the city morgue. A copy of Corner's report was attached. Have you checked with the morgue? I got two of the boys doing it now. Does McGraw know? I called him at his home. He told us to meet him in his office. Hello. Oh, yes, he's here. For you, Dave. Yes? Uh-huh. Be right over. Remember that cylinder we took out of Hennessy's dictaphone? Like to hear it? Sure. Come on. Bye, Penny. Now perhaps we can all relax for a little while. Bye, honey. I'll call you later. Chet, you didn't have breakfast. No. Nope. Chet, it's not healthy to. Bye, George. Buchanan. If you know that, you know why I'm here. It's no use, McGraw. I said I would live to see you die. I am watching you now. Come back home. Come home. Come back home. Mary for deposit tomorrow. 142 $100 bills, $150 bills, the rest five, ten. I told you I'd come back. That's when the dictaphone was knocked out of his hand. Or he dropped it. Anyone recognize that voice? I do, and I don't. I just, just got a feeling that I've heard it before. Uh, it'd be hard to place it anyway, but the killer's voice sounded more mechanical than Hennessy's. Do you notice it? Yeah, it's like a, like a recording of a recording. I told you I'd come back. Not much to tie on to there. Well, could have been some big loser who swore to get even, or some gambler he rousted around. Anyone on anything. Anyway, there's no doubt that he bent the bars and came in through the window. We could hear the sound of the glass crashing. Listen, McGraw must be waiting for us now. Oh, but that's the DA. Tell him we're on the way up. Hello? Yeah. McGraw. 
McGraw was found in his garage, murdered. I'll meet you down there. I want to pick up some equipment first. Okay. Looks like the same job pulled on Hennessy. Did you find any prints? Plenty. I asked the Bureau to call me here as soon as they get a line on them. How long has he been dead? About an hour. Must have happened as he was getting ready to go to the office. Who found him? His wife. She's in the house now. I had to give her a sedative. Take him away, boys. Captain Harris, I can't figure this one. The jaw's broken. Neck, too. It wasn't a weapon. The bruises looked to me as though they'd been done by a fist. But McGraw was a husky guy. I've never seen a case where a man's neck was broken by the sheer force of a grip. Should anyone want to kill McGraw? Oh, he was a district attorney. A lot of guys must have hated his guts. McGraw's enemies were usually friends of Hennessy's. And yet they were both killed in the same way and by the same person. What thing? Thing? How about a statement, Captain Harris? About time we had something official. As soon as we have something to say, we'll say it. You tie up McGraw's murder with the Hennessy murder? Not until we know more about it. You want on the phone, Captain. It's in the house. Geiger counter, huh? I want to check the car for radioactive emanations. Emanations? Say, Dr. Walker, didn't you find radioactivity in the Hennessy killing? Well, then that would connect the two murders, wouldn't it? Well, yes and no. It's not a conclusive fact, just an approach. That story you gave us last night about a creature charged with Adam Ray's, it's on the level then, huh? I told you it was. Hey, we had a scoop and didn't know it. Let's get out of here. It was the Bureau. The prints belonged to a Vernon Dunn. He died a few weeks ago. And that's not all. Get this. The boys just checked the morgue. Eight bodies have disappeared. Call the inspector and tell him I want to talk to him as soon as possible. And ask him to have the mayor there and the commanding general of this military area. General? We're going to need all the cooperation we can get on this one. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Dick Cutting with today's commentary on the news. Well, as you know, today's big story hinges around the killing of District Attorney McGraw whose body was found today in his garage, murdered in much the same manner as Hennessy was. What connection the murder of McGraw can possibly have with Hennessy, a gangland boss, is unknown at present. And Dr. Chet Walker of the police laboratory has given out a fantastic story, so incredible that one can lend it little credence. And Dr. Walker is of the opinion these crimes are being perpetrated by dead men. Yes, I said dead men, restored to life in some unknown manner by being charged with atom rays, which uh, give them superhuman strength and makes them impervious to bullets. Well, if you want to believe that story, you can. This Walker must be a pretty smart cookie. Mm, he has imagination. The kind of imagination that may prove dangerous to us. You mean the kind of imagination that could prove dangerous to him? About time to feed them, isn't it? Hello, Walker. Captain. Mayor Bremer. General Saunders. This is Captain Harris and Dr. Walker. Walker's in charge of our lab. I hope, Dr. Walker, you've called us here to assure us the stories about dead men walking our streets is only a hoax. I wish they were. What'd you find out about those bodies stolen from the morgue? Well, according to the records, they're to be cremated. They were placed in coffins and delivered to the city crematory. May I ask how this concerns me? You can be of great help to us, General, as I'll explain in a moment. But first, I'd like to give you and the mayor a picture of what's been taking place so that you can understand exactly what we're up against. Couldn't those bodies have been stolen by some of those uh, creatures on or before arrival? Well, they could have, but that wouldn't explain them uh, coming back to life. What makes you so sure they were alive? What makes me so sure? Well, they were walking around, weren't they? It says you found fingerprints. 
You yourself said these dead people committed the crimes. Yes, those are the facts. But I'm afraid we'll have to depart from our usual approach to get anywhere in this case. I wish, Dr. Walker, you'd make yourself a little clearer. Well, let me give you a very primitive example. Do you remember Faraday's experiment with a frog's leg? I flunked chemistry one three times. I remember Faraday's experiment. Good. Then you'll remember that Faraday applied energy, in that case electricity, to the leg which had been severed from its body. It moved. <laughs> Frog legs. I don't see the parallel. People of that day wouldn't believe that the leg of a dead animal could move, but Faraday proved it. We know why. Yes, now we know why and take our knowledge for granted. In our case, which is as mysterious to us as Faraday's was in his time, we found traces of energy. Energy which would increase the strength of any animal tremendously. Radioactivity. Well, you've lost me. All right, Chet, what you're trying to do now is throw away everything we've learned so far about life and death and start from scratch. And just how do you propose to do this? Well, we have certain clues. One very definite. In both of the murders, radioactive emanations were found. Now, that's where you come in, General. We, we'll have to find the source of these emanations. Now, I want to use Air Force planes and trucks equipped with instruments which can track down that source. I'll see that you get the trucks, and I'll call Colonel Roberts at Monroe Air Force Base about the planes. He'll give you all the cooperation you need. We'd certainly appreciate that. Tell him I'll be down to talk to him at, say, 3 o'clock. Goodbye, Dr. Walker. Thank you. Good day, gentlemen. On all things to happen under my administration, keep me posted on this. And suppose we do find the source. Then we'll be able to find the cause. That car in front. Get it. Wreck it. Drive into it. Find out. It may concern us. Come back. Stop. Tell me, strangers are in the habit of. <laughs> I was wondering if you'd be home in time for dinner. <laughs> That's not true, Chet. Is it? Better hide it from Penny. But how can I hide a thing like. Please, Joyce. I'm tired and I'm hungry and. I... Frankly, I don't know how. I don't know any more about it than it says right there. Look, how we fix for a nice cold martini? Coming right up, Chet. Penny's outside playing. Oh, what about it? Well, is it safe? Oh, there seems to be some sort of a definite pattern. Can't put my finger on it, but I do know that Hennessy and McGraw were killed for a reason. What's all right, then? Well, for a while. I don't think they've gotten around to indiscriminate killings yet. Yet? Hi, Daddy. Hi, Penny. <laughs> Where's the paper, Mommy? I want to read the funnies. Oh, it didn't come today, dear. Oh, then I'll put on TV. Uh, no, Penny. It's broken, Penny. We'll have to have a man over to fix it. Yeah. Look, why don't you play with Henrietta? She's a bad girl, and I'm punishing her. Well, did you spank her? I put her in her bed and told her she can't look at TV all week. <laughs> You're a tough one, you are. Ah, oh, thanks, honey. I've been looking forward to this all day. I'll go. Hello, Uncle 
Good day. Hi, Penny. How are you? Oh, it's you. Oh, you don't seem particularly happy to see me. There comes a time in every woman's life when she'd like to be alone with her husband, if only for a few minutes. How come you never got married, Uncle Dave? He'd be a bigamist, Penny. He's already married to your father. Want a drink, Dave? No, not while I'm on duty. <laughs> well, I'm not on duty. You will be when you hear what I've got to tell you. Mm -hmm. Penny, will you please go to your room? Why? I didn't do anything. I know, dear. It's just that Daddy and Uncle Dave want to be alone. I won't bother them. Go to your room this minute, Penny. All right, but I always let you listen when I talk to Henrietta. Okay, let's have it. Look, I'm not a child, and this is my house. You're not going to put me out of it. The only time my wife talks is when I'm ready to go to sleep. All right, I'll get dinner. Remember you said this morning that you were thrown because Hennessy and McGraw were both killed in the same way and by the same thing, yet they were always on opposite sides of the fence? Well, what about it? Well, that worried me, too, so I checked back on both of them and found that they were on the same side of the fence once. Well, when was that? About ten years ago, when you first came into the police lab. Hennessy and McGraw helped convict Frank Buchanan. Buchanan. Well, the name rings a bell, but not too clearly. Buchanan was a top mobster around these parts. He practically ran the city. When McGraw became DA, he took out after him. Well, where does Hennessy come in? Well, Hennessy was Buchanan's number two man. He wanted the number one slot, so he turned on him. Yeah, I remember something about it now. Wasn't Buchanan shipped off to Europe? That's right. He got five years in deportation. I don't get the connection. Listen to this. I got out of the newspaper files. No sooner was sentence pronounced than Buchanan leaped to his feet, screaming to McGraw, I'll get you for this, you and everyone who squealed on me. I'll come back and see you die, every single one of you. Get it? Voice on the dictaphone. I told you I'd come back. That's right. It's the first thing I thought of, too. Yeah. But you just said he was deported. I'm not saying it's him, but it's a lead. It's the only connecting link I could come up with. Why, any guy should want to kill both McGraw and Hennessy. Did you check with the authorities over there? Well, I cabled them and just got this answer. Frank Buchanan resided in Rome, Via Lachula number 11, house vacated, left no forwarding address. Well, he could still be anywhere in Europe. Well, I cabled the chief of police in Rome, asked him to investigate further, and cabled me as soon as he had a line on him. Were there any others who helped convict Buchanan? Two others who were in with him, and the fellow who was the assistant district attorney, Lester Banning, he's now in private practice. Think they should be warned? I'm having the boys round them up now. They should be in my office any minute. Well, let's go. What about dinner? Oh, keep it warm, honey. I'll be back in an hour or two. Sorry, Joyce. I'll bet you are. One for the road? Oh, no, no, dear. I'm back on duty. Nice to see you, Mr. Banning. Thank you, Captain. This is Dr. Walker, head of our crime lab. Dr. Banning. And this is Jason French. He used to be Buchanan's accountant. And Don here used to be his gunsel. I don't like that word. Paid killer. Like it better? Look, I've been traveling straight, and I don't know what I was brought here for. But it's a bum rap. I want to see a lawyer. Now tell me, Captain. What's this all about? I called you here to warn you that your lives may be in danger. Is Buchanan back? What makes you say that? At first Hennessy, then McGraw. He said he'd get us. But I didn't know he was back in a country. His sentence wasn't changed. How could he be back? If he's in this country, he's here illegally. Now, if you take my advice, you'd all go to jail for protection and stay there until we can find out whether it's Buchanan or not who's behind all this. Not me. I work too hard to get out of jail. It's for your own good. Think my wife would believe that? She'd think I went back to packing a rod. What about you? I have a good business now. Tax auditor, public accountant. If I went to jail, my reputation would be ruined. I don't think it's necessary, Captain. Particularly since there's no proof that Buchanan is back in this country. Mm, all right. But I am going to give you protection 24 hours a day, no matter where you are. You got that, Tom? Right. Have some of the boys drive him home. Now, if an attempt is made to get any one of them next, then we'll know for sure it'll complete the pattern. It's the hard way to find out. Mm, this is from the chief of police in Rome. Attention, Captain David Harris. Buchanan's house converted to laboratory abandoned for over six months. Arrival cages with dead dogs, monkeys, etc. Discovered Buchanan known to have been associated with German scientist named Steig. 
and lab operation who also has disappeared. If I find any additional information, we'll advise Rome Chief of Police. Dogs, cats, monkeys. That's the way experimentation usually starts. Starts? It's only one step from animals to human beings. Captain Harris sent me to relieve you. A little early, but why complain? Jason Franchot last night, I must apologize for my recent skepticism regarding these radioactive creatures. It seems they do exist and they are prowling the street. Police Chief Camden assures us that they are doing everything in their power to get to the source of these beings. With the cooperation of the military, planes and helicopters equipped with radium finders are now overhead. And strange-looking trucks, similarly equipped, are now, at this moment, prowling through the streets of our city to track them down. Glass of beer, please. Thank you. Hey, you forgot your chain. This is a sawbuck. Two bits in the till, nine seventy five in my pocket. <laughs> Now, that's what I call a tip. You from Water and Power? 5.2. What's this all about, anyway? I'm probing for radioactivity. Is there uranium around here? I'm going to call my lawyer and find out if I own the mineral rights. <laughs> who is sitting here? Search me. Uh, he went out the back way. You know who he is? Never saw him before. Don't wash that glass. <laughs> you never wash with them anyway. You leave anything else here? No. Oh. Just this. This ten spot hot? Hotter than you think. This is an international who's who of the medical profession. Here's what it says. Wilhelm Steig, born in Stuttgart, Germany in 1893. University Berlin, Zurich, Milan. 1948 Harman Prize for his research in amygdala stimuli. Amygdala stimuli, what's that? Ultra shortwave stimulations to specific parts of the brain, producing involuntary movements of the body. It's highly specialized stuff. <laughs> yeah. A number of stories have been published about amygdala stimulation of monkeys. Here's one of them. Appropriations have been made for research and development. And there's a doctor in Madrid who's made great advances since this article was published. Have you been uh, conducting any experiments here at the hospital? No, but I have a short film that I told you about. Would you like me to run it? Well, I'd appreciate it. Fine. Draw the curtains, will you?
This animal looks content, doesn't it? You wouldn't suspect that it has 18 electrodes inserted in its skull. Turning this switch releases a small amount of ultra-short waves. Those electrodes are tuned to specific frequencies. As long as the impulse is released, the dog barks. By applying another impulse of different frequency, the dog immediately falls asleep. It will lie there as long as the stimulus is active. Another impulse will make it vicious. Docile. Hunger can be induced, or it can be made to resent its food. Amygdala stimulations, somatomotor and visceromotor effects. Does this demonstration satisfy your curiosity? Almost. Try my special mixture. Thanks. This experiment was done on live animals. Of course. Do you think it could be applied to dead ones? Dead ones? Well, offhand, I'd say no. The, the command impulse is so small, less than a millionth of a watt, that only the animal's body energies could supply the reactions. If you could replace the body energy from an outside source, say with uh, radioactive energies, do you think you'd get the same results? Well, your question is much too abstract to be answered at this moment, Dr. Walker. Do you think an experiment on humans would have the same result as on animals? We haven't arrived at that stage of our experiment yet. Could it be possible that somebody else has tried and already succeeded? Are you trying to connect the experiments with animals, with mysterious events of our city? It would answer the riddle, wouldn't it? Remote controlled creatures, their brains powered by atomic energy roaming the streets, directed from a central point. Utterly fantastic. Yes. Yes, he's here. It's for you, Doctor. Mm -hmm. Yes? Oh, yes, Dave. Send the glass and that bill over to the lab at once. That bird must be radiating in the dark. I don't understand how he can stay alive with all that radium poisoning in his system. German accent, huh? Better have them search every house within a 10-block radius. I didn't even get that close to you. What did you ever leave here for? The pain, the pain in my hand was killing me. If I hadn't gotten some medicine to relieve it, I would have gone crazy. From now on, just hide in here. The walls and the shutters let it, they'll never find us. I'm not so sure. Those creatures, they leave radioactive traces. Sooner or later, they will be picked up. How low they're flying. Oh, I think it was a mistake not to get rid of that walker when we had a chance. It's a mistake we can remedy easily enough. I'll stop them. I'll make them ground every plane and pull out every truck looking for us. Go in and fix up that stoolie. I want to send one of them out. And you feel certain it's Buchanan who's behind all this? For my money, it is. Killing Franchot completed the pattern. What about those other two, Banning and uh, whatever his name is? Done. We put them in the county jail. They'll be safe there. It's the first time that Gunsell ever begged to be put into jail. He was scared stiff. He isn't the only one. Yes? Call for you, sir. Personal. The party says it's important. Hello? Yes, this is Chief Camden. You will stop all planes and trucks searching for radioactivity. I will give you until 3 o'clock this afternoon to do this. If you do not, many people will be killed exactly one hour later. Who is this? Who is this? There will be no other warning. Hello? 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 
They hung up before I could put a tracer on it. There is a warning to withdraw all our planes and trucks equipped with radium finders by three o'clock. Or else. What do you mean, or else? He, or whatever it was, practically threatened mass murder one hour later. What did the voice sound like? Sort of mechanical. What do you think, Dr. Walker? Could he, or they, or whatever these creatures are, could they do this thing? There's no definite knowledge as to what they can or cannot do. Then they must be stopped. How? But our only chance is to find their source. But if we pull back all the planes and trucks, we'll never find the source. Give in to Buchanan now, and there's no telling what he'll ask for next. You think they're bluffing, Chet? They could be, but I doubt it. Captain, alert the entire force. Put every available officer on duty at 4 o'clock. I wonder just what they're trying to do. We'll find out in two hours. declaring a state of emergency. All police facilities have been alerted to protect us against any further crimes by so-called atomic creatures. The state militia will assist in patrolling all traffic. All scheduled transportation shall be canceled until further notice. If you must go outside, have identification papers with you. The radium finding planes and trucks will continue to operate since this is our best hope of locating the source of these beings. Do not be alarmed as we are confident we will soon pinpoint the origin of these emanations. All possible measures for your safety are being taken. But you better dismantle the panel right now and get out of here while we can. Not till I'm finished. There are two more yet. Say nothing of that bright boy, Dr. Walker. But you don't even know where they have hidden Banning and Don. Walker, no. If we got him. Well, as a creature, he would have no memory. You know that. He's a cop, isn't he? We can use him to get the information for us. Bring one of them out right now. Will you do me a favor and take my car over to the lab? Have one of the boys take a Geiger counter out of the trunk. Needs a little adjustment. All right, you can drive mine home. Thanks. I'll bring it back in the morning. Okay. Hey, what's the big idea? Identification. Oh, yes, of course, I forgot. French on. Hand me this carpet. We made our first real mistake, a dangerous mistake. I don't think so. What will you use Captain Harris for? The same thing I was going to use Walker for. He's a cop too, isn't he? Get him in shape as fast as you can. You ready? Yes. Let's take a look at him.
closer. Stop. Why doesn't he see us? What's wrong? Look at us. See how the ceiling cells transmit the image the creature sees on the screen? And with him, I have actually succeeded in stimulating the muscular impulse of the larynx so that I can activate him to speak. With his own voice? Yes. Let's hear it. Make him say something to me. What do you want him to say? His name. And make him look at me. Look at him. Say, my name is David Harris. Captain Harris, Homicide Squad. My name is David Harris. Captain Harris, Homicide Squad. Stag, you may be a crackpot, but you're also a genius. I think we can finish up all our unfinished business by tomorrow. Homicide. Hello, Uncle Dave. Daddy isn't home. He just left. I'm baking a cake for Penny. It's her birthday. I'm seven today, going on eight. Excuse me, will you? My cake will be ruined. Gosh, your hand is cold. Sit down, Uncle Dave. I wanted to see what Mother got for Henrietta. She got him a dress, panties, socks, and shoes. Don't you think they're beautiful? What's the matter, Uncle Dave? Can I touch your tongue? Where is your father? I don't know. Ask your mother. Mommy, Uncle Dave wants to know where Daddy is. He went to see Chief Camden, Dave. Something about those two men involved with Buchanan. Those two you're keeping in the county jail. names again, Dave. You know who I'm talking about. Fanning and Dunn. That's it. You sound terrible, Dave. Are you sure you feel well? Penny, keep away from him. He may be coming down with a cold. Here, hold him yet for me. It's time to feed her. Chet had a brainstorm this morning, Dave. Something about giving out phony information as to where those two men were hidden. He thinks Buchanan will send out one of those creatures to kill them, and then you can capture him. But he'll tell you all about that when you see him. Penny, what are you looking for? Where's Henrietta's bottle? Here it is. Now, please stay out of the kitchen. I'm busy enough as it is. Said to get in touch with him immediately. The 
This is 13F1, calling from frequency 2. Inform Dr. Chet Walker that Captain Harris is at the county jail. KMA 367. Hello. Captain Harris, glad to see you again. Yeah, we're getting tired of looking at one another. How long do we have to stay holed up here? Being with him is like being in solitary. Well, if we can judge by the progress the police are making, we may as well resign ourselves to spending the rest of our lives together. That may not be as long as you think. What's wrong, Captain? Oh. Captain! You off your rocker? I'm Frank Buchanan. You're cracked. You ain't Buchanan. You're Captain Harris. I am Buchanan. I told you I'd see you die. Dave, what's eating you? Slow down, Dave. Attention all cars. Lester Banning and Tom Dunn found murdered in county jail. Police Captain David Harris suspect. Proceeding south with Dr. Chet Walker in yellow convertible. License number 27H4926. Oh, no. Proceeding south with Dr. Chet Walker in yellow convertible. License number 278-4926. Smash up that car. Smash it up. Did the car crash? It must have. And both are dead. Only one can die, Mr. Wickham. Dr. Walker, you all right? Have Chief Camden rush a helicopter to pick up Captain Harris and take him to the city hospital. Yes, sir. And tell him to have Dr. Norton stand by. Right. Muscular movement extremely strong. Extraocular reactions missing completely. Reactions similar to those of animals subjected to strong amygdaloid stimulations. Got that? Thank you. The x-rays of the skull. These will bring us a few steps closer to the solution. Will you follow me to my office, please? The doctor, stay here and let me know should the patient's condition change. Amazing. What are the small protrusions on the end of the dark lines? Electrodes. As you see, they are grouped in patterns. Everyone is connected with an amygdala circuit. You used that word before. What does it mean? The small lobes projecting from the underside of the cerebellum. All our body movements originate from there. These nerves stimulate muscular impulses. That's how the body gets orders from the brain. Muscular impulses. The larynx is a muscle, isn't it? We certainly move it by muscular contraction. That's why those creatures are able to talk. If the right stimulation activates the amygdala circuit, they will speak. There's no question about it. But they're not aware of what they're saying. They're not aware of anything. Those discs in front of the eyes are sealant cells. What makes you think so? Electric impulses produced by light. They could very well be transmitted back to a, well, let me call it a receiving station. What would that mean? If the image on the retina could be transmitted, then someone would be able to witness whatever this creature is seeing on a screen. But that's impossible. Look here. What is it? You see, a few of the very fine wires have been broken loose. That's why the creature is impassive. He's moving. He's trying to get away. We can't get through to him. See? Some of the electrodes must have been broken when he had that accident. The oscillograph doesn't register the impulse. 
His eyes are open. Does he see us? I don't know. But don't go any closer in case the sealant cells can still transmit light images. Maybe you can lead us to them, Dave. Maybe you can... It's just a hunch, but I think he's trying to return to his source of energy. Look, see how he turns? As if trying to find a certain direction? Watch it! Let him go. I'll follow him in the helicopter that brought us. Tell your men not to interfere with Captain Harris if he takes a car, even a police car. Let's hope he leads us to the source before his energy runs down completely. Try to contact him. If he has any energy left at all, he'll return to replenish it. The radium in this tube, wherever he is, this will attract him like a magnet. Captain Harris leaving hospital area, important, do not apprehend, over and up. can see 557. Have your men keep out of his way. He can only see what is in front of him. Clear? Over. Clear. Over and out. Take her down. Fly about 500 yards behind 557. Patrol car 557 passing 3rd Street area. Important. Do not apprehend. 557 turned onto Foothill, proceeding south. Caution them to follow and not interfere. We'll advise when 557 reaches destination. Over. Down. No, there must be radium in there. A fire would burn off its protective lead shield. 
Yes, once the radium is exposed, the gamma rays might spread over the entire city. We can't even blow open the door or the windows. Well, it would be too dangerous to try it because of explosion. that were stolen from the morgue. have to sever the electrodes to stop them. trying to reach the source. Got here. Look at that. A birthday present from Uncle Dave. Isn't that pretty? Oh, but isn't he coming? No, no, I, I'm afraid uh, he'll he'll have to be away for a while. Why? I'm not mad at him anymore. It's not that, Penny. It's it's business. Look, Penny, why don't you name your new dolly Henrietta the Second? No, I'm going to call her Dave. Dave? What well, Dave's a boy's name. That's a girl doll you've got there. I don't care. I know. I'll 
I'll tell all my friends she's a tomboy. <laughs> well, guess that ought to do it, huh? All right, Benny. See if you can blow these out now. Here, Daddy. Hold A for me. All righty. Take a deep breath now. Come on. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> Wonderful. made with the original crispy pizza crust, our exclusive pizza sauce, a pinch of salt, a touch of Parmesan grated cheese, mozzarella cheese, a little oregano, and into the oven it goes. And presto, a delicious pizza. What'll it be, folks, cheese or sausage? Why not enjoy some delicious California crispy pizza mouth-watering, taste-tempting, meaty shrimp mixture all wrapped up in a crispy noodle jacket. It's a treat you can't beat. So come on, join the folks that are getting fresh, crispy, flavor shrimp rolls now at the snack bar. They're shrimply delicious. our concession and see for yourself the delicious treats, drinks, and snacks awaiting you. If you are thirsty, try ice-cold soft drinks or a cup of hot, flavorful coffee. Get something to go with it, like a sizzling and satisfying hot dog or a tasty, tender sandwich. Try one of these delicious treats and you'll be back at the concession for more before the show is over. The service at our concession is friendly and efficient. Fresh brewed hot coffee, as you like it. Uh, may I help you? Uh, I'd like two of those, please. Hot dogs? Yes, sir. And three of those, and one of those, and five bars of these, and a cup of that nice hot liquid. Uh, coffee. Uh, coming right up. Oh, and two bags of those peculiar white coffee material. Uh, you mean our crunchy popcorn. 
Uh, uh, shall I wrap that for you, sir? Oh, that's all right. My saucer's just outside. <laughs> they come from miles to enjoy our intermission. Piers Dry Cleaners, 117 North Columbus Street. Highest quality dry cleaning and finishing at cash and carry discount prices. Ray Piers service is unexcelled. We help you protect your fine clothes. Highly trained professionals using the most modern methods and equipment clean and finish your garments with the utmost care. Small repairs plus full tailoring services is another feature at Ray Piers. For the finest cleaning and finishing at cash and carry discount prices, it's Ray Piers Dry Cleaners, 117 North Columbus Street. What's to eat? What's to drink? Good food galore. Quick as a wink. Bye. Ice cream bars. It's the handy way to enjoy smooth, rich, creamy ice cream. Get some. Men, there's a drive-in movie full of juicy people. Wow. A pleasant aroma for you, but not for mosquitoes. Pick is easy to use. Light it and forget it. Pick's aroma keeps mosquitoes, gnats, and sand flies away. Pick is the best protection for barbecues, fishing and camping trips, or just relaxing in the yard. So if you don't want our company ever anywhere, just light Pick and see what I mean? Bye! Pick is on sale at the refreshment stand now. It's showtime.
hardest hit of all coastal areas, surf cities staggered under fierce winds recorded at 90 miles an hour. No estimate is yet as to loss of life. However, emergency disaster units in the area report at least 20 persons dead or missing and scores injured since the main force of Hurricane Emily hit yesterday. Included in the casualty list is WDTV's cameraman, Don Harrison, who suffered a broken leg and multiple bruises when he was struck by flying debris during the heroic filming of the scenes you have just witnessed. The United States Weather Bureau forecasts report that no further danger is anticipated from Hurricane Emily. Her main force is spent, and latest estimates place her position from 50 to 100 miles at sea. WDTV makes an urgent plea in behalf of Mr. Leslie Turner president of Turner Electronics Corporation and one of Surf City's most prominent citizens. Families living along the coast are asked to please be on the lookout for any signs of the motor launch Bel Paso, which was on a cruise when the hurricane hit. Aboard the missing craft are his daughter, Jerry Turner, Frederick Macklin, and two employees, Samuel Ching and Chris Kamana. The craft has been missing for two days, and last radio contact placed its position directly in the path of the storm. We appeal to you to report any information immediately to the Coast Guard authorities. And now stand by for a remote on-the-scene coverage by your special events channel, WDTV. I managed to save some clothes for you, but if they have formal dances on this island, I'm afraid we're out of luck. Very funny. You have an overwhelming sense of humor. Where's my powder blue cashmere shorty? And these things are all wrinkled. The stains will never come out. Look, you're lucky to be alive. It's about time you got off of that high horse of yours, Jerry Turner. This hurricane wasn't my idea. There's a lot of things we had to say, more important than your wardrobe. At least we saved the radio. We'll be all right. Come on now. How about a little smile? I hate cheerful people. Don't try so hard. You know, if it wasn't for your disposition, I might mistake you for a pretty girl. This canvas is supposed to be waterproof. If it isn't, we can get our money back. Oh, I'll have to hand it to you, Sammy. If you hadn't thought to protect the radio when the big blow hit. My old man says I'm as smart as a cook in a cheap chow mein joint. You know, they load the noodles with spaghetti and make it stretch a little further. What were you doing? You nearly covered me with sand. Chris, can I see you a minute? I'm awfully sorry, Miss Turner. I'll be more careful hereafter. Oh, forget it. Sammy, you may as well call me Jerry. Looks like a very informal island. Where are we, Chris? I not know for sure. Well, you know, this group of islands like the inside of your hat. This one never appeared in my hat. Mr. Mecklen, I not believe it even chartered. You sure? Very sure. And this may be it. Yes, Mr. Michael. Could be. Hey, guess what? We may have been blown to the place we were looking for. This radio will only receive, Mr. Macklin. I can't even send home for money. You might at least have thought to save me a pair of Toreador pants and one lousy pair of shoes. Hey, you two. Didn't you hear what I said? We may have found the island. Congratulations. If anything's going to be found right now, I want it to be me. Your father financed this trip. If this is the island, at least he got something for his money. He got what he wanted. He got rid of me. It would have served him right if we'd all drowned in that storm. Jerry! Don't Jerry me. If it hadn't been for you and your ideas about an island with strange creatures, we wouldn't be here now. Fred Macklin, you get me out of this horrid place, and you do it right now. Hey, listen! They can't possibly make us out. Here we are! Here! Down here! Down here! Mr. Macklin! Mr. Macklin! There she is, Pat. He targeted that patch of rock in the center of the island. Target? Dead winds prevail from the west. When we make the bomb run, we'll come in due south at 25,000. Roger, Pappy. Three runs should blast that island out of this world. Take a good look. We're heading home. Hey, did I hear right? Great right so, Sammy. Landed on a 
Let's try just bombing the road. They're going to bomb us? We overheard their radio conversation. It was a preliminary scouting crew. Tomorrow, the next day, the day after that, this island may not be here anymore. Chris, we're short on our luck again. There's no one on this island besides ourselves. The Navy would have investigated before they decided to bomb. They made sure it was uninhabited. You're wrong, Mr. Macklin. I find fresh footprints, human footprints. Real crazy. You know, these footprints go in a circle. Maybe the natives down here are getting onto this rock and roll kick. Bad. He's bad. Oh, they'll get over it. Kids will be kids. Can it, Sammy? Although it does look like you're performing a dance or a ceremony. Well, what do you know? I thought of it. Not too big nor too deep. What do you make of it, Chris? All footprints of women. You think they're recent? Well, it's hard to say. The tide doesn't come up this far. Nothing to disturb the prints. Could have been made days ago. Well, thank goodness they're human. Well, I'm not so sure, Jerry. There's a peculiar mark at the end of the toes that could be claws. Hard to say in this dry sand. Are you trying to scare me? I'm trying to prepare you for a possibility, Jerry. What possibility? Chris? This is Island of Evil. Oh, come on now. Really? Don't laugh, Jerry. I think he's right. And you know what I think? I think it's time you stopped all this childish mumbo-jumbo. You wheedle money out of my father for the trip, and here we are, in the middle of nowhere. Well, you've had your fun, and you've got your money. Now let's play a new game, like first one home is a hero. There's been more than rumor about these animal people. Chris even spoke to a fisherman who saw one of these creatures a couple of years ago. Now stop being a small brat and pitch in. It'll be dark in an hour or so, and we have to make camp. I am absolutely not spending the night on this island. That suits me fine. As far as I'm concerned, you can go take a big jump into that ocean. And while you're there, give the sharks my regards. Sammy, Chris, let's make camp near here. Any luck? Hard to say. All I got here is a bunch of chopped suey. Hey, you got something I can clean the bases of these tubes with? Here. Try those. I won't be needing them for a long time. Well, a hairpin for a needle. You've got imagination. I have nothing. Poor little rich girl. Leave me alone. Fred. Do I answer or do I leave you alone? What's going to happen to us? I honestly don't know, Jerry. Maybe a search party will find us. Sammy can get that radio in good shape. We can call for help. Perhaps those high altitude bombers will settle matters for us tomorrow. Maybe the animal people. Hey, come here. Come here, everybody. What is it? Is it fixed? We're famous. What do you mean? What did you hear? We're famous dead people. Oh, Sammy. <laughs> no kidding. I just heard the news report. They found the wreckage of another boat, and they think it's us. That means they'll give up the search for us. Well, at least they said nice things about us. Except the announcer kept calling me Samuel Ching. You know, I was christened Sammy. You've got to get that radio working both ways. That's our only hope to summon help now. Fred, I'm tired. Sure, Jerry. There's nothing we can do now. We might as well all turn in. We'll try and get a look around the island tomorrow. I'm supposed to sleep on this? Bird stand on one leg. Want to try that? Very funny. Ha, ha. Here, give me some privacy while I undress. I feel a lot safer when I'm tucked in. Is 
You going to have a look around the island tomorrow? Sammy and I are. You can give Chris a hand around the camp. Not on your life. I'm going with you. Now, look, I don't think that you... I'm not interested in your opinion. My father paid for this trip. I want the full sightseeing tour. I was only interested in your safety. There's no telling what we may run into. But you're the boss, lady. Guess you think I'm a pretty big heel, don't you? Not at all. Oh? Just a medium-sized heel. I should have known better. Where are you going to sleep? By the fire with the others. Good night. What was that? Well, it's nothing at all. Just, just a serve. You go on to sleep, huh? If you need anything, yell. Well, you heard it too, huh? Someone's out there. I never saw a drum that could beat itself. We'll stand guard during the night. Chris, let me have your knife. I'll take the first watch and I'll call you when I feel tired. Fletcher. Are you all right, Miss Jerry? Okay. You were very brave. I didn't think I had it in me. Thank you, Fred. If we ever get out of this thing alive, I'll see that Dad pays you well for this. Thanks. Let's get going. I want to be sure and give you your money's worth. guide this excursion any better, you're welcome to it. Who's now who's on their high horse? Hey, look. Here's a clue that'll lead us to what we're looking for. Look at the insignia on it. What do you make of it? A Maltese cross with a skull and crossbone. I've seen that insignia someplace before. I've got it. Why, that's the insignia of my fraternity at college. Boy, now we are making progress, huh, Mr. Macklin? Yes, we are, Sandy. Do you have your fraternity pin on you? Never without it. Funny, I'm, I'm sure I had it on me. You did. Sammy Ching. It's got your name on it. Jumping one ton. Now we are under something. What do you figure it means, Mr. Macklin? It could only mean one thing, Sammy. We've been walking in circles. It's your pen. You probably dropped it the last time through. I'm surrounded with idiots. Come on, let's go back to the beach. I'll leave. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. 
Come on, we'll go this way. Something's happened to the camp. Mr. Baxman, what's happened? I don't know. Where's Chris? The radio. It's all smashed. All right, don't listen to this, Sammy. Chris! Chris! Ah! No. Snipe is gone. Hey, look. Bloodstains. Footprints. I'll follow them. They might lead to something. No. No, sir. We better stick together from now on. At least we'll have the odds on our side. There's nothing we can do for poor Chris. Let's follow the bloodstains. Sammy, I'm scared. You know something, Miss Jerry? If it'll make you feel any better, so am I. for dad ever since I can remember. I only grew to know him the last two days. Now he's dead. What's the difference? One of us will be next. At least he'll always be near the sea he loves so well. Where do we go from here, Mr. Macklin? I'm not sure. We can't stay here. There may have been others like the one we found. We'll have to take our chances in the jungle. Yeah. I'd rather be looking for the she-demons than have them find us. Jerry, it's time to go. Sounds like water. It's over this way. That water's boiling. Probably due to some volcanic action. Let's follow the stream. Maybe it'll lead us to something. Well, at least we won't get lost. Tell me, I don't know. Don't ask me, I don't care. Tired? At a slight disadvantage. We left in such a hurry, I only packed one pair of feet. Oh, if my friends could only see me now. What I wouldn't give for a nice, chill glass of champagne. Miss Turner, what is your pleasure this evening? Well, uh, first, my good man, I'd like some uh, chilled madrilene. Uh, make sure it's very, very chilled. That is the specialty of the house, mademoiselle. And for an entree? Mm, a slice tenderloin, but only if it's rare. Oh, stop it. My stomach's done backflips. It must be. I can hear it from here. It sounds like uh, drums. Yeah. You hear it too, huh? Shh, listen. It's coming from that direction. 
Come on, this is what we were waiting for. the same, but the faces, they're normal, even better. That's where they came from. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ralph, I'm there. I'm going to see what's on the other side of that tunnel. If anything should happen, you two make it back to the beach. Please be careful. Do you really care? Just that I've gotten used to you, that's all. <laughs> Can't figure it out. So, all is in readiness. How long must this continue, Carl? The experiments are almost completed, my dear. Uh, doctor, I told you never to come into this laboratory when I'm busy. Get him out! Get him out! I will not look at the hair, Osler. Well, what's so important? Speak up. I've got work to do. I came to report that I have recaptured the escaped Fransimus. And you interrupt me to tell me that? Of course you've rounded them up. Where could they have gone? Carl, get him out. Make him go away. You heard what my wife said. Yes! <laughs> oh, my nishman, nishman. 
Hmm. A healthy specimen. <laughs> Soon you will be beautiful again, my dear. Now, if you are ready, we can continue the experiment. for the rest of you. Try to escape again. I give you some of the same. dead. I'm frightened. Where are we? What is this? Some kind of a torture camp. Why well, the Nazis were experts at it. Those noise will attract the guards. There's an entrance leading into the mountain. You game? Couldn't be any worse than this. You want a bet? It's taken a long time to cut all this away. All of these islands are of volcanic origin. I suspect these lava tubes were converted into rooms. Couldn't make a better hiding place. Let's see what's in there. going to be all right. We'll find a way out of this. Why do you keep saying that? You know it isn't true. It isn't the snakes and the, the bombs and all those horrible creatures. It'll be something else. I tried to be brave. I really tried. Look at me a moment. 
You've been very brave. It's the first time I've seen the real you. The you that's been hidden behind a hard, tough crust. Forgive me, Fred. I didn't mean to make a scene. It's just that this has all been such a terrible nightmare. I guess it got the better of me. Yeah. The best of you. You know something, Fred? I never asked forgiveness from anyone before. Yet I asked you to forgive me, and I meant it. It wasn't hard to say. In fact, it felt quite natural. You've given me more courage than I've ever known before. It's always been there. You've just shaken it loose. All my life I've had anything I wanted. Everything money could buy. Yet in two days on this island, I found something that all the money in the world can't buy. We may only have a short time. You've made me realize what an empty, self-centered person I've been. Whatever happens, I want you to know that. Some of this cuts the girl down. Out of. will be pleased to meet you. I will take you to him personally. He will regret and apologize for the insults I suffered today. Come over here so that I can see you better. Ah, you are more beautiful than I thought. Perhaps Herr Osler would see fit to make a present of you to Igor. Yes. In exchange for the Medal of Honor, I would gratefully accept such a beautiful gift. Where did you come from? How did you get here? I guess you want the truth. You're not only beautiful, you are smart. I will know if you are lying. 
I just swooshed in on a dry martini. What is this swoosh? It means to float, American slang. So you floated in on a dry martini. I have heard of this martini. So the Americans are still using them, eh? Are you alone? Practically. I do not understand your answer. Make yourself clear. Would you repeat the question, please? I am beginning to lose my patience with you, Fraulein. Perhaps you are not aware of the fact you are a prisoner of the German Reich. I've got big news for you, fatso. Shut up! I will teach you to have respect for me. Okay, big boy. You look pretty good with those helpless women. Let's see how you do with me. Sammy, get Jerry out of here. Wait at the top of the stairs. And don't let any of his buddies in. But, Mr. Macklin, do as I say. That was your fatal mistake, American swine. <laughs> is going to be in here when the head man finds out what's happened. Not much of a choice, but if I have a vote, I'll take my chances out there with Dan. Sorry, does it hurt bad? Only when I laugh. That slob must have worn brass knuckles. You sure he didn't have a friend? You were no slouch yourself, Mr. Macklin. Well, let's get going before rigor mortis sets in. Hand the Hand the We're making the best of our simple island life. Some days, maybe I shall return to the fatherland. I doubt that very much, Colonel Carl Osler. Hmm? Or do you prefer to be known as the butcher? I don't understand you. Well, you have a short memory. Or perhaps you'd rather forget. You see, Colonel Osler, I happen to know that you're one of the most wanted men by the War Crime Commission. You flatter me. I didn't know I was so well known. There are hundreds of families in Europe who will never forget you as the butcher. Colonel Osler earned his nickname by using unfortunate Nazi prisoners as human guinea pigs. Lügen! Alles Lügen! This is all lies. I was merely fulfilling my responsibility as a soldier of the Fuhrer in developing a master race. Those women in the cages, Dr. Osler. Those she-demons. She-demons? <laughs> what an amusing name for my specimen. She demons. <laughs> it's very amusing, but quite appropriate. Would those be the girls who disappeared from the island of Portonese about ten years ago? 
seem to be very well informed. Perhaps too well informed. How much does the world know of this? Only rumors. Vague rumors. Why don't you give us the facts? <laughs> you must be joking. Since you won't have an opportunity to repeat it. Why not? It's true. During the war, I performed some of experiments which might be termed unethical. But I simply couldn't pass up the opportunity. You see, the people involved were sentenced to die, and how they died was unimportant. My obligation was to develop a method of replacing scar tissue on the human body by new skin. You see, my Fuhrer believed that since we were developing a master race, there would be no place for scarred war veterans. Every Nazi was supposed to be a perfect human specimen. And he actually believed that? Believed it? We proved it. A colleague and I successfully transformed scar tissue on a woman's body into clear new skin through the use of radiation. Unfortunately, the subject died shortly after the experiment due to the extreme radiation dosages. Well, that doesn't sound like a successful treatment. I'm sure that if we had been given enough time, we would have solved the problem of the radiation dosages. But what has that to do with the laboratory here? It was during the course of this experimentation that we quite accidentally discovered a potential power of incomparable magnitude from the source of our radiation. You see, this source was hot volcanic matter. You mean lava? Yes, precisely. The largest natural resource on this earth. Lava a natural resource? Why, of course. Whereas oil and coal and iron are known to us only on the extreme crust of the earth, the entire center is a mass of boiling rock. If someone could discover a use for this lava, well, they could have a constant supply of ready-made power from now until kingdom come. Yes, yes. Your observation is quite close. But we went one step further. Let me show you. You are looking at molten lava. It has a temperature of over 65,000 degrees Fahrenheit and maintains it constantly. If this fire were to cool by as much as a thousand degrees, the surface of the earth would in time be covered by a layer of ice. Because we learned about these islands, I was sent here during the war by our chiefs of staff to continue our research on what we termed thermal energy. What you see here is the result of years of labor. Well, you lost me a long time ago, but go ahead. It's really quite simple. Unfortunately, it takes an enormous amount of equipment. What we are doing is electronically extracting the heat from the center of the earth and converting it into useful power. You see, the generators which make the electricity that drives this machinery use this power. Unfortunately, we can only use a very small amount of it, and the rest has to go to waste. Then actually, you don't use the lava, only the heat from it. Now, from this heat, you manufacture electricity. That is used to extract the original power source. Is that correct? That's basically correct. And what you're saying is you have accomplished perpetual motion. That is quite correct. You see, although I have succeeded in completing the most sought-after dream of mankind since time immemorial, I have to keep it a closed secret between myself and my creatures. But what about all this equipment? Oh, that was much easier than you suspect. It was really quite a simple matter to build our quarters and the generators in the laboratory with labor and material brought here by submarine. Are well, you aware that this island is being used for bombing practice by our naval air force? Quite aware. They have bombed here many times. But we are quite safe, you see. From view and from bombs, everything is built underground. Well, why hasn't someone discovered this island before? Some have. 
Like yourselves, come here accidentally. Naturally, they can never leave alive. The rest are kept away by the convenient orders of your naval air force. Mona! Mona, what are you doing here? Carl, I heard that we have visitors. It has been so long that I thought... That's correct, but these are strangers. Oh, you're so beautiful. I'm so glad you came. I was just saying to Carl the other day that... Mona, can't you see we are busy? Now, you will leave us now. Yes, Carl. As you say, Carl. Uh, you will have time later. Our friends are planning to stay on the island for a very long time. I see. You're wondering about Mona. Hmm? Mona's my wife. She once was a very beautiful woman. She was my laboratory assistant when I married her many years ago. And later she continued to work with me here on the island. And one day, a terrible accident happened. She was severely burned during ex experimentation by exhaust from the lava. I vowed to spend the rest of my life to make her beautiful again. The girls? Yes. I have made some refinements on a discarded theory based on the exchange of what I term character X between a healthy specimen and my wife. What is a character X? We all have in us a chemical quality Composed of genes. That gives us our personal appearance, our, uh, our individual character. To eliminate it would be fatal. Therefore, I have devised a very complicated method by which I can physically exchange this uh, secretion between two living persons. Those creatures out there are a reflection of your wife's disfigurement. But the fangs, the claws, their animal instincts. Oh, well, unfortunately, a full transfusion of character X from Mona would be so void of character genes that, that it might be fatal. Therefore, it was necessary to reinforce this substance passing from Mona to the girls by character X from a combination of animals. So in addition to your wife's genes... Those poor girls are being injected with gene cells, or character X as you call it, from animals. Then that counts for their animalistic mannerisms. Do not be sorry for my little specimens, because in a few days they'll be able to rebuild their own character cells again and be normal as before. Which is very convenient, because that way I can use them over and over again. You're mad. Completely insane. No, my dear. You are mistaken. It's only the unimaginative who cannot believe that man is capable of improving on nature. We've seen the results of your errors, Dr. Osler. But what of Mona? We've discussed enough. I told you much more than I intended. Take the girl to the women's isolation room. That's merely a precautionary measure. What happens to us now? I suppose you realize the extent of damage and inconvenience you have caused? Also, you have killed my most faithful and trusted guard. I expect you will find the punishment, even considering your American standards, for the time being, rather lenient. You can do what you want to with us. But if there's any sense of decency left in that worm-ridden body of yours, I hope you'll have some consideration for Jerry. Already taken that into consideration. You are worrying needlessly. I have something very special planned for her. You harm that girl and I'll kill you if it's the last thing I ever do. Understand? You do not seem to be in a position to dictate anything. Ah. The next time we meet... I do not think you will have the exuberance that you so foolishly display now. 
My soldiers will see to that. <laughs> Their armor man is dusty. Escape him, Vassa. Haben Sie Durst? Durst? Was soll Trinkschwein? Das ist from Igor. Aufstehen. Obey my command. I said get up! Swine! You filthy slob. I can take all your dish out and more. He's had enough. They don't kid around, do they? Real tough eggs. Filthy scum. Anything I can do for you? Yeah, you can teach me to keep my big mouth shut. I really talk myself into one then. Lie back. Maybe we can sleep it off. Look at them. Well, at least they don't know what's going on. Hey, if you don't think there's any chance we figure in his plans, do you? Who'd want a wife with our face? <laughs> yeah, never thought of that. At least that's something in our favor. The only thing. Well, we got nothing to lose. If we could only figure something out. You got any ideas? Maybe if we could fit a hairpin in that lock. It's been done before, you know. It wouldn't work then either. Hey, you asleep? I'm just thinking. Uh, Jerry? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. There's only something I could do. Knowing Oslo and his barbaric reputation. There's no telling what torture she's going through. It's really most unfortunate that I have to serve my choicest vintage in this inadequate, inappropriate manner, but you understand that after 12 years, our supply of luxury items is severely depleted. <laughs> Will you accept this as a token of my esteem and of my admiration for your charm and for your beauty? Let's toast to the beginning of a long and pleasurable association. Hmm? Don't be bashful. Oh, you are tired. Hmm? Come, drink this and relax. It will make you feel much better. Come on, don't act like a child. Do you know that I went to considerable effort to have this room arranged? So it's Comfortable and congenial to the occasion. Now, come on. Consider me a friend. Don't be afraid. Come. Let's drink together. Where's Mona and Mr. Macklin? Why aren't they here? Oh, how stupid of me. At the last moment, I decided that the late hour is not beneficial to Mona's health. Mona needs a whole night's rest. Your friend, Mr. Macklin, sent his regrets. He said he wasn't feeling well. He wants to be excused. What have you done to Fred? Oh, there's no reason for concern. Both of your friends are exceptionally well being cared for. I have given personal orders that they receive special attention by my most congenial guardsmen. Do you think I would have come here if I thought we were going to be alone? Or that I would put on this mothball monstrosity for you? Monstrosity? You are simply beautiful, man. This dress has been in Mona's closet for a long time. Never have I seen it look so striking. 
I've been very patient with you. Now, please, don't let's argue on such a beautiful night. Hmm? My only wish is to please you. If you wish to please me, drop dead. There's no need for bitterness, Miss Turner. However, if you insist, I am quite capable of employing, let's say, more persuasive measures. However, I don't intend to let this champagne go to waste. In that case, I have to be a bad host and drink alone. Here's to your happiness. And to mine. All my life, I've spent in the service of my country. I've done my duty well. Most of these medals here are bestowed by the Fuhrer personally. I've accomplished scientific achievements that all the men in the world haven't been able to do. I'm master of my own island, with a specially trained force of men to serve my every need. I have everything. Everything a man can wish. But I have nothing. See, I'm very fond of my wife. But I'm very lonely. Unfortunately, you don't understand. I understand perfectly, and if you don't mind, I think I'll go to my room. No, stay here. Come. Look at the island. Isn't it beautiful? It's yours. It is yours to reign over as my queen. Everything that I have, everything I've worked for in all these years is yours. I'll give it to you, understand? I'll give it to you in exchange for your love. I must have you. I must. That was very foolish of you. I have other ways to make you realize. Perhaps you will change your mind when you hear that the life of your American swine depends on your decision. You wouldn't dare. It's another one of your filthy lying tricks. Ah. I have dealt with situations like this before. Remember? I used to serve in concentration camps. A human life is of no consequence to me. You mean human beasts. What have you done with Fred and Sammy? I've trained my soldiers well in the art of persuasive torture. You've already murdered them. No. They have suffered inconveniences, yes. But how long they suffer. And when they die, that's entirely up to your decision. I continue to refuse? And I have only one alternative. That I must utilize your beauty to further the experiments on my wife. She demon? You see, you understand me perfectly. But this isn't necessary. None of this is necessary. It will just be reasonable. Keep, <laughs> keep away from me. Come on. You're so beautiful. I... <laughs> <laughs> It's our only chance. Please, don't use a tunnel. Hide somewhere in the jungle. You'll be safe until daylight. Maybe there's some other way out. The escape demons are out there. I'll chance it. Afraid? I don't know. Quickly, they're coming. I'll find a way. I'll be back. Parker! Parker! Schnell, Idioten! The girl has escaped!
thought that I was in my room. I have been very much awake. The shadows of this night have revealed a great deal to me. Mona, let me explain. No explanations are necessary. You see, the last time I wore that dress was in that very same room. Just before the accident, many years ago, we were younger and much in love. <laughs> He promised me the island, too. That was long ago. Now all I have to live for is the moment when I can remove these bandages and once again face the world. How bad is your face? Shortly after the accident, Carl ordered all of the mirrors on the island destroyed. I have never seen my face since. I left a small compact mirror with my clothes in your dressing room. If you should find it... I don't think there'd be any harm done. Listen, the soldiers have left. On the other side of the island, you will find a small rowboat. If you hurry, you can make it before sunrise. Why are you doing this? You know if I escape, I have to tell the authorities. I have no choice. In either case, I would lose Carl. I prefer to lose him to the authorities. I can't leave now, Mona. But why not? Well, not without my friends. You must be very much in love make such a sacrifice. Here. Take this. It is a key to the lock on their cage. I will show you an easier way back. Would you help me get my clothes? I can't get around very well in this. You might be able to wear it again soon. I'll never forget you for this, Mama. There's one thing I must warn you of. If anything should happen, I will not be able to help you any further. Do you understand? Then come. I will lead you part of the way. worried about you. I thought I'd lost you. I sure as I for sore eyes if once I really got him. But what are you doing here? The key to our cell? Where'd you get it? Secret, I'll tell you later. I know where there's a boat. How do we get there? Mountain trail, I'll lead you. Sammy, see where the guard is. I don't know how you did it. It's clear now. You just run out the door. Now. rest? I just remember. I have some important work tomorrow in the laboratory. Except 
With the piercing of the needle, you will feel little or no pain. Struggling is of no avail. It only tends to heighten your pulse and raise your blood pressure to a dangerous point. Please, I beg of you, do what you want with us, but in heaven's name, release the girl. Have you no human dignity left? Miss Turner, in a few moments, your features will turn into a deformed being with the characteristics of an animal. In a few days, you will be normal again. But unfortunately, you will never remember who you are. For the rest of your life, you will live without identity. For the last time, I give you an opportunity to change your mind on the basis of our discussion last night. Well, then, we proceed with the operation. What's that? Do you hear that? Hmm? Sounds like planes. It's probably a patrol. They started to bomb the island. They've bombed before we are safe. Stop! What are you doing? This will not continue. You have done enough harm. But Moon, I am doing this for you. Let me continue. It was I who gave them the key to escape. Why did you do this, Mona? Because of what you have done to me. on Carl if necessary. I could not bring myself to do it. Here. You may have use for it. It will be dangerous to use the stairs. There's a tunnel over there. You'll find safety on the other side. Good luck. Oh, Miss Turner. Thank you most graciously for the mirror. Mona, you must come with us. Thank you. You're most kind, but my place is here by my husband's side. But why? Why? Would you go if you look like this? <laughs> Let's try it. 
great big hot plate. Let's get moving. We can't go through that way. Go to the passage. Let's see where it leads. Now where are we? We're standing on the floor of an old volcanic crater. The way things are going, this will be a molten lava pit any minute. We'll try to get out over that side over there. It's, it looks the easiest. How about Sammy? Are you ready? counting your fortune cookies before they're baked. I don't exactly look forward to a 300-mile rowing excursion back to the mainland. Well, uh, we've got nothing to worry about. As soon as those pilots report the volcanic eruption out here, we'll have the whole fleet for company. Get all the company I need right now. You two can boil if you want to. I'm going down to the boat. Now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.
Thanks again for dropping in, and we hope you've enjoyed the evening as much as we've enjoyed having you here. Till next time, please drive carefully, and good night now. <laughs>